Have you ever noticed how children kind of have a kamikaze uh, approach to life, where invariably, unless you have eyes on all sides of your head, children will gravitate towards something which is going to hurt them? Uh, have you ever noticed how they do that? Like they, they, I remember, like I used to love jumping off stuff when I was a child. I'd climb anything and jump off it. Now I never actually broke it. I never actually broke a bone, which is quite amazing considering my childhood. I never actually broke a bone. But we said climb or, or I'd climb any sort of a stack of chairs or table when I was when I was young and jump off. Uh, when things when I got a bit older, I was climbing trees. Absolutely no problem climbing any any height of a tree at all. To get to the very top, like to the last top limb of the tree, you know what I mean? Whoa. <laughs> I used to love it. I absolutely love the terror of it. Uh, then, yeah, just how we gravitate towards things that aren't necessarily good for us. I mean, if you allow children to eat whatever they want, will they sit down and say, okay, I need a balanced diet? Will children say that? No, they will not. Right? They'll say, where are the biscuits? Where are the crisps? Where's the Coke? Let's get this party started. Right? Uh, then, but like, that same mentality doesn't just leave us when we um, hit the ripe old age of 18 or 21 or whatever you consider adulthood to be. Uh, that, that, that approach, that mentality, I think goes, often goes with us. Just the way we satisfy it is different. But the, it's the same kind of kamikaze uh, approach to life where we, we think we want, well, we want things, we say we want things, we desire things that aren't good for us. And we kind of know they're not good for us, but we still desire them anyway. And we're still convinced, we still believe over and over and over and over and over and over again that this thing that hasn't satisfied me in the past will satisfy me now. You know, so whatever sinful tendency it was, whatever kind of um, uh, mad Saturday night uh, we, we've had in the past, which end up so often in disappointment and uh, broken heels off your stilettos and uh, disappointed relationships or superficial relationships or drunkenness or just a whole load of money spent uh, kind of with nothing to show for it and thrills and spills but at the end of the day unsatisfying and yet so 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 often people in that age range of, of, of socializing will still say well let's try it again next Saturday maybe next Saturday it'll be fun and we keep doing it we just keep doing it even though but it wasn't really fun last time and similarly, as, as, as adults, uh, we can be convinced that a certain amount of money, a certain amount of pleasure, a certain relationship, a certain house, uh, or a house in a certain place, or a certain lifestyle, and then I'll be happy. And we have kind of then we kamikaze our, our, our lives towards this by putting all our eggs into that basket, by working so, so hard that we haven't time for the family or friends or anyone else. We, we put everything into this. Like we, we invest all that we have into this, basically, crisps and coke version of life that we think if we have this, we'll be happy. And then maybe we, get, maybe we do get there. Maybe, I mean, people work hard, they can achieve an awful lot. And you discover, well, now that I'm here, it's grand, yeah, it's nice. Yes, I'm glad we have this house. I'm, I'm happy with it but I'm still unsatisfied. I'm still unsatisfied. It's a, it's a, it's, I don't know, how, Jenny, how long do we have to live before we learn this lesson? Or, I don't know, if we could, I don't know. If we could have two, two shots at life, you know, kind of, now that I know all of this, can I start my life again? Well, then, would you want to go back? Would you want to go back through all of your teenage years knowing what you know now? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think the reason we get one shot at life. Uh, we, should, we were supposed to learn and bring, bring, this, bring this wisdom with us. You think of, what's it called, that 27 Club, that unfortunate uh, title given to, to, to this club of, it's not, not so much a club, as a grouping of stars who became quite famous in their 20s and then ended their lives by 27. Kurt Cobain and Jimi Hendrix and Jim Morrison Amy Winehouse, 27, you know, reached the, such a star, stardom and fame and influence and power and end their own lives at 27. It's, it's, it's desperately sad when you think of it, to, to, to get everything you want and far more, everything you desire, rather than everything you, rather than everything you need, everything you want, you know, all the relationships and drugs or 
pleasure of money, influence, everyone knowing your name, all that kind of stuff. That to get all of that and realise it's nothing. It's actually nothing at all. It means nothing. It's just all straw. When Moses came down from meeting the Lord, as we hear in the book of Exodus here, when Aaron and all the sons of Israel saw Moses, the skin on his face shone so much that they would not venture near him. When he had come from the presence of the Lord, he he was radiant, he irradiated. He was changed, it was still him, it was still him, but very, very different, like a different version, like, a, like the best version, like this, this holy version. This, this, uh, he had been in the presence of God, who had now as such filled him. And now the presence of God was radiating from him. It's not, it's not Moses radiating of his, of, of his own accord. It's God in him, God through him. He spends time with God, and it changes him, it transforms him gives him peace and so, so much so that those who are with him feel something of, of the divine in our gospel then it says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone has found he hides it again goes off happy happy sells everything he owns and buys the field so this finding the Lord finding faith it should make us happy right it should ha- make us uh, grant us actual happiness actual fulfillment not the, the, the elusive promise uh, of, of, of pleasure or, or happiness which invariably fails and invariably leaves us feeling more empty than we were before this, this relationship in the hand, or this, this, this discovery makes us, leaves us feeling actually happy actual happiness and then spending time with the Lord, we, like Moses, can or should be transformed also interiorly. So that when people meet us or see us, there's something a bit different about us. There's something a bit peaceful about us. I was going to say something a bit otherworldly. That sounds a bit uh, strange. But uh, something a bit, like when you've met people who, who spend time with the Lord and know the Lord well, their hearts are focused on different things. Their hearts are they're focused on more on deeper things, on things that actually really matter. They have a happiness which is rooted not in this life or anything this life offers. A happiness that's rooted in God, which doesn't mean, by the way, you can't have or shouldn't have a healthy or a happy family life and all those relationships in, in work and, and, and good friendships. And Absolutely, we should, and we need those things. We've been created as, as, as social beings, as people created in a family, and even God himself wants, us, wants to create a family and wants us to be together in heaven as, a, as one body, as one family, sharing his divine nature. So he does want communion and community. That This isn't the problem. So don't think that it's just kind of me and God and nothing else, no one else matters. No, it's me and God, and because of that, I can invest in my family and friends and all those other relationships. But with the priority, with the number one priority, being me and the Lord. And then once I found him, and I find happiness, and I'm transformed, then I have something authentic to offer the world. We are frantically trying to find happiness today. I think I'm not totally up to date with the financial situation in Ireland. It seems that on the whole, we're doing well. We seem to have a lot of debt, but we're spending a lot of money. Um, we seem to be earning a lot of money and spending a lot of money, and I suppose that works out. I don't know. Uh, but, I mean, you see a lot of new cars on the road. You see a lot of people building big houses. We seem quite affluent or comfortable on average. Are we any happier? Are we any happier? What are our levels of suicide like? What are our levels of alcoholism like? What are our levels of those on, on antidepressants like? Are we happy? I would argue we're not. That beautiful quotation from St. Augustine from the 5th century still rings so true. You have made us for yourself, O oh Lord, 
and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Our hearts are restless until they rest in you, regardless of what else we have, fame or fortune. Without you, Lord, we, we will not be at peace. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns, everything, and buys the field. Lord, we ask today that our faith may grant us authentic happiness and that we won't feel the need to, to kamikaze our way through lives, risking everything for fleeting happiness, but that we might find our authentic, lasting happiness in you and in you alone. 